And straight after that, we've got Poppy. If you haven't seen Poppy's channel, go and check him out too. He's good for a chat, fun, and he makes some cool stuff. Hey gang, that's right, this is Poppy's Workshop, and those of you, boing, bounce the rule off the floor, <laughs> those of you who have watched Poppy's Workshop before know that, hi, I'm Poppy, and this is my workshop, <laughs> I'm about to, uh, do something that nobody on YouTube has done. I'm going to tram the head of my horizontal mill. Yeah. I mean, people with bridge ports, they're tramming the head of it. Usually after they've had it slung over to the side to use it horizontally, they want to tram it back vertical or once they've knotted it or you know they want to tram it back to vertical you know exactly perpendicular to the table in two dimensions you know in and out and side to side oh. ah. hot sleep substitute Okay, now, over here, over here, and let's zoom you in a little bit, over here, because the audience is coming, the audience is coming, the audience is coming, no other way. Okay. Now, as you can see, let me take off my computer eyes and put on the real world. Wow. It's like opening them up. Okay. Now, as you see, I have this set up in the classic shear line horizontal mill conversion. Yeah. Please excuse the sniffles and snotty and all that. It's spring. Spring has sprung. Okay. Got to crank this back out. With this bellows here, I can't get the face of the uh, face plate and this edge of the table to meet. And the smartest way The smartest way here is to remove the bellows. As much work as I went to to put these bellows in place, so we crank this out. Weber, three inch. Uh, move that so it's not burning my hand while I crank. I could probably use the two inch. But you know, Poppy. Never abandon a fairly decent plan just because it might blow up in your face. Make it prove it's going to blow up in your face. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're really getting into sketchy territory here.
A little bit. Better plan is necessary. Ah. Okay, it's way out. There we are. Okay. Back this locking screw all the way up. And see why. Ah, locking screw would help, wouldn't it? is trammed for 99% of the work uh, zoom out Got it right to first guess. Whoa. Cannot see 
this screen just behind you with that pair of glasses on. And the funny thing is, these right here, those ones right there, they're the ones with the computer non-glare coating. Can't see computer screen one. These are the plain readers. My wife had to order because I wanted to look at computers. So she ordered the same prescription without the computer non-glare coating. I can see computers perfectly well. That's a bar. And people used to say at my father's union, IBEW was feather bedded. I don't think so. I know IBEW never let idiots cause shit like this to happen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Never. Okay, now, there is a little... Oh, blink, blink, blink. I gotta replace your switch one of these days. When I get the time. There's a short, about so long, about so long, alignment bar. It bolts here through the to these two holes to keep this from I can't find it at the moment I know it's in here I saw it last time I was out here you notice that uh, same old story I, I I had it out here I last time I was out here I come out here now I'm the only one that's been out here at least only living person come out here So I don't know. Uh, it's possible it fell on the floor. But uh. Now, I was thinking I might want to take a small piece of angle iron and make a new alignment fixture for here, putting two tapped holes through it so I can gronk gronk. To adjust but for right now So I can get the spindle very close to the side of the table now. And like I said, it's perpendicular enough for 99% of the work I'm likely to do on this machine. When a job requiring the other 1% comes up, then I'll get out the indicators. <laughs> okay, that's that. Crank you up.
I'll look some more to see if I can find that uh, short alignment fixturing bar. I know it's in here. I know for a fact that it's in here. Get back in there with the chucks. Now, crank this back out. All the way out. Oh! Oh! All the way out. So we're basically going lock to lock on this steering wheel. Okay. Yeah. Now comes the next tweak that's necessary. For you over here. Oh. That's not a very good view. Huh? Let's bring you over here. Oh yeah, that's superlative there. Okay, now. Glasses off. Other glasses on. Now here is a little dilemma I have. You can go back there. Uh, what to mark it with? Huh. I know. Okay. You see here this screw and this spring. And you see the spring runs over to the other screw over here. Right? Now this spring is supposed to go back here. And it's already starting to creep. So I don't need to uh, mark it now because it's already as is convenient reference point. All I need is to machine a little little itty bitty depression between here and the bottom of this screw hole. Between here and the bottom of this screw hole. You see him now? And that We'll hold this securely. And you see I have a piece of tape here. That's uh, that's beyond ghetto. That's Mumbai shitbreaker technology. My first thought was a couple of brads drill 
just the right size and bang in a couple of brads. I've got too much class to say tappity tap tap tap. I don't make fun of Quinn. I think that's poor taste. As a matter of fact, I like Quinn. I think she does good work. So, you know, banging a couple of brads. Me. You know, that, that's ghetto. Another thought I have is take a piece of thin aluminum sheet, chop up an old beer can. I guess I could find one of them. It'd be approximately right here and form a half round and screw it to this in three places. I also had the thought of replacing this spring with a piece of rubber band. You know that stretchy thing people used to buy and wrap around stuff to hold them? Well, I got some half inch by seven inch I use for dry belts for my lapidary unit. Yeah, that's what I use them for. Anyway, but I said no. Then I said, well, machine a cord down here. And I could bolt it through this into the cord. Now, you notice all these alternatives I've mentioned involve a lot of threaded fasteners. But... I want to just be able to flick it off, yank this baby out, and boom, horizontal mill. Now, once I'm absolutely certain, where are you? Now, once I'm absolutely certain that I love how horizontal this is to the table. Now redo this alignment bar. I might do it with the angle iron and a couple of adjusting screws. And gronk it down really, 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 really good. Okay. And without the head here. There it is. Come on, baby, where are you? Ah, there we are. Uh, come on, baby. Uh, a little bit more. There we are. Off with its head. I've been hearing a lot of guys in videos talking about that. It's usually about a bridge port. Okay, now, one moment while I painfully lever myself up out of the seat. Oh.
Ah. No, you're not in there. So it's a good thing I didn't go running over there to look for you there. Zoom a roomy out. And now you see. That. The horizontal column. does not interfere with the eight direction milling column. Unless I want to swing way past 45 degrees that way Uh, here, yeah, yeah, may, maybe 20 degrees. But most of the time, <laughs> this is going to be wanted for between here. And back here. Now, one thing you may have noticed how pretty and pristine and unmolested this vice, I mean, this uh, milling table is. That's because it is brand new, it has never had a part clamp to it. Where did I put the old one? Ah oh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> Arr, here we be. Arr. Here's the unit. Yeah, that's the one it's replacing. This is what 20 years in my shop did to it. That's why <laughs> I bought this. Now I also have that. Let me catch my breath. Freak out, it's common for a heart patient as bad as me to get out of breath and just stand up. It's common. Okay, now, as you see, 
I've got these two tooling plates. This big one is going to be semi-permanently mounted there and trammed to this edge. So these holes all nice line up straight. This one here is most likely going to be the sacrum official one. The one that I'm going to be drilling, slotting, and tapping different size holes into. Then bolt to this one. Or maybe not. But still, one of these is slated to be on this table from now on. And with this eight way head, uh, eight way column arm, I should say. can't get all that low down for know, horizontal boring. Know. With the other head, I could do some short length horizontal boring. But, you know. Not no long bar jobs. No, no, no. All right, gang, that was trimming the horizontal uh, mill. <laughs> I guarantee you, no one's ever done it on YouTube before. And show you how I plan to solve the issue of holding this retaining spring back behind the base of the eight direction milling column. It's only 32 minutes? Wow. Well, hey, I'm going to stop for right now. And I'm going to look around, see if there's anything else of constructiveness I could uh, video. Might be back. If not, good night from California. Hi, gang. Poppy here. I'm back in the computer room. You saw how out of breath and uh, struggling I was out there in the shop, you know. Uh, that's typical for 65 year old heart patients. Five-way bypass, four stents, one coiled uh, artery, largest lobe of the right lung excised during heart surgery because a bleb ruptured, screech, halt, excised hunk of lung, proceed with the rest of the heart operation. Yeah, and then I proceeded to bleed all the rest of that day and until like 5 o'clock the next day, I mean p.m., not a.m. Nurses, they were double bagging the blood into me while another nurse is heating up two more bags. You know, I went through the entire Bay Area supply of O positive that day because they can't filter and put it back in. They can only give you fresh wino blood. Yes. Anyway. Uh, dun, ah, I showed you what I have to do to that truncated cone that's the base of the eight direction milling 
column. Uh, replicates all the movements of a Bridgeport head column. You know, it goes like this and this and this and dee 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 and dee 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 dee. All of them. I I used to call it the San Marcos milling column. Those of you who can understand that, you're as old as me and known Shearline probably longer than me. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's the 19th of May, 19. and nature just does not want to fucking cooperate. When I wanted that breeze dead still on 110 and no freaking shade. I wouldn't want it to be quiet so I can record. Ah. Uh, machining that groove in that truncated cone is the base for the eight direction milling column. I will uh, next time out in the shop. I'll set the lathe up and do that. I think it was yesterday, maybe it was the day before, I was watching another YouTuber's video. He has a really nice, really nice big metal planer. And he managed to set it up so the table would creep along really slow, like it was a milling machine table. And I thought I saw what it looked like an electric motor with a worm and the worm wheel and somehow attached to the gear under the table of his shaper table. I think. I'm not sure. But what I do know is he took a Bridgeport milling machine head and he made some kind of adapter so he could bolt it to the tool head of his planer. And he had this eight foot piece of rectangular cold roll bolted to the table. You know, you can't use a vise on planer. That's a no no. First of all, they don't make a 12 foot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a no no. Vices on planers are a no no. Anyway, he had it bolted down and he cut the angle and he, reset, and he cut the top. And he said, Now watch how this flexes. And he let go of the clamps hold and it blows up like four, four to six inches in the middle of this eight foot run. Perfectly illustrating why cold rolled steel and by extension cold drawn round bar stock, you don't want to cut slots or slice it in half like a pulsa kielbasa, you know, because it goes, it gets Peroni's disease without the big bump. You get the big bump from banging your head with your fist saying, <laughs> uh, This was a lesson I learned back in high school. If you're going to do something like milling on one side of a piece of coal roll, normalize it first. Use hot roll, normalize it, and then quickly sandblast to get all that mill scale off it. And then, <laughs> anyway, I've just tried to fill some time with some interesting chatter here. Um, I think the guy with the planer 
He did all that work to was deliberately showing what would happen with that cold roll rectangular stock. He's a good actor. But I could barely tell he was setting it up just for that. But. <laughs> Ow. Oh, that hurts. That hurts my knee. It really does. Well. That's about seven. Well, so. Anyway, I'm really close to the end of the big, <coughs> the big million machine project. Got to cut that groove for the spring and bellows. I have to bang my head against the wall, figure out how I want to do that uh, column retention stop. And a big one. I want to figure out how to accurately register that base of the eight direction column so that the zero lines up on zero when I got it trimmed against the side of the table. Yeah. Then I could work on the small little things I've got for in between. Then maybe I can start on the lathe project. <laughs> Starting with how to clean your shear line lathe. And inspect every little part and put it back together and lubricate it and all that. Then I gotta mouth the follower rest, try it their way, then do it mine. And let's see what else. Oh, yes. Power feed for the cross slide. Not so much for. The compound. Although I can easily rig that up with this at the same time, it's the same fixture fit on the hand wheel. Might as well. The power feed for lay the milling machine. Especially the milling machine, you know. Oh, long table. Get to feel like Her Majesty with broke fingers because can't go there. So, my wife got me for my birthday the thing I ordered so I could. She said, Oh, you want one of them? I want no one to know what to get you for your birthday. Anyway, it's a three Newton max torque uh, screwdriver nut and bolt runner. Claims it'll put a two and a half inch dry roll screw all the way into it. Two by four. I don't know about that, but I'll find out if three Newtons can do the power feeding on my milling machine and cross slide in my lathe. You get to see that. Anyway, I'm going to go for now. Good night from California. Oh, and if Emma, if you're watching me, hi, thank you for recommending people watch me. Good night.